I thought I'd start off 2012 with probably the most technical talk I've decided to come up with. Um, CA tiled layer is, well has anyone used CA tiled layer before? I know a couple people have, probably more than I thought. Good. Well, <clears throat> my background is building kind of transport apps. Uh, that's how I started in iOS. And CA tiled layer has always been there. Your maps app, and that's TripView from Sydney, which is probably one of the better kind of transport apps for Australia. They're both using CA tiled layer. So from the get-go, you've always been able to use CA tiled layer. When I started in iOS, um, that was a little bit, a little bit too far advanced for me. Uh, going to WWDC, they did show you a tiled layer thing, so I used that instead of this. So what I've brought to you today is a little bit of my story coming from a non-CA tiled layer background to a CA tiled layer background. I've had a lot of trouble with it and I've been telling everyone that I know that this has been something I've been struggling with. I think I spoke to Chris in Sydney uh, when we were at the Apple developer thing the other week, the other month. I, even, even a month ago, six weeks ago, I was struggling with the right questions to ask how to get this solved. So I thought I'll do a Coker Heads talk the moment I got it right. And whilst preparing this talk and after having worked it out, I thought in hindsight, oh, maybe it's not that difficult. But uh, anyway, I went, I went ahead with it. Uh, so yeah, it, the CA tiled layer manages your, manages zooming for you. It, it'll take a big image. Uh, you know, you can't load a 16, 20 megapixel image onto your phone in one go. It'll just run out of memory. Um, CA tiled layer assumes you've tiled them all together if they're PNGs or tiled them up and it'll sort of load them as you scroll it around onto view. Um, basically, it's like a dynamic view that you can control at multiple zoom levels as well. That's kind of its bonus thing. Um, it's been in iOS since iOS 2. Like it was, it's always been there. It's been on Mac OS for, for yonks. Uh, most, of the, most of the examples are from Mac OS. It's got a lot to do with PDF rendering as well, I think, in some, some regard. Um, they vastly updated its API. Well, not vastly. It's only got like three methods. But they updated it for iOS 4 um, when the retina display came in. So you've got layer scale or contents scale as a factor. So it's been worth using since iOS 4, but it's been possible forever. Um, so tiled views back in 2009 was um, when I went to WWDC and I used tiled scroll views, which is basically uh, a scroll view with sub views. And every time you scroll it, it reorganizes them so it looks like you've got a map or something. Uh, that's a screenshot of my app using the, it's the App Store version of my app that hasn't been updated for eight months, um, using tiled scroll views. Um, iOS 3 compatibility was easy, uh, well, built in. It was iOS 3 at the time. And Retina display capability was easy too because you just supplied the at two times images and you kind of went up for nothing. Um, the downsides of downsides of that was it's actually quite obvious when you're scrolling around one of my apps that it's drawing the pixels as you scroll it over the, the boundaries of the tiles. It's not very it's not asynchronous at all. It's not so noticeable in you know iPad 2 land when you've got everything at your disposal. But back in 3G, 3GS land, it was obvious, but I just had to deal with it. Um, I've been playing with tiled view, as I said, since, well, I'm just looking here at my dates, you know, since, since forever. <laughs> since, like, since, you know, early 2010, iOS 4 came out, I went to WW, actually, I didn't go to WWDC 2010, but I watched all the videos, and there's this infamous frog demo of the scroll views. Um, if anyone doesn't know that, you haven't watched any of the videos. But they're, they're going through, and they're talking about it, and, you know, oh this looks really good and they showed basically the same tiled scroll view code they showed the year before at the very end they started talking about uh, they started talking about something else this was my favorite slide from the video I found it today it's just a screenshot from iTunes they're going oh here's how CA tiled layer works you know you've got this layer and that layer and that layer I tried to transcribe the the guy who was talking like his words I tried to type it as he said he spoke so fast it didn't make any sense it never helped me and there's an example, that's the code that I wrote sort of, well, what's that now, like, you know, 1st of the 11th, 2010. I've been trying this for ages, but <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't get past it. I just couldn't get past it. Anyway, I come here with an actual story. Um, my main goals and the reason that, 
the reason I struggled was, see, I just wanted a zooming scroll view, I wanted iOS 4, I wanted retina, non-retina, and I did not at any means want to give at two times images, because I thought that's just wasting all these pixels, I'm adding two times as many things to my app. So I had all these kind of requirements that I struggled with. Anyway, finally, success. <laughs> um, and that's what I'm here to talk about, really. So in implementing CA tiled layer, you need a basic understanding of CA layers. That's what I struggled with, and I think most people can go through 12 months, 18 months, two years of iOS experience, and not actually have to deal with CA layers. If you come from the Mac world, you're probably more used to them. A couple of key points that are that I came up with with these, and this is just anecdotal evidence, um, but everyone says from day one, you read any docs, UI views are backed by CA layers. Okay, great. That's what you see. You read it in the docs, great. But all good CA layer documentation is OSX based, which is good. Like, it's all really handy, but NSView is not backed by CA layer, as I said. So you don't, they don't translate 100%. If you don't understand what you're reading, you don't get it 100%. So my key point at the bottom there is draw rect, which you get in UI view, is more or less. Um, if I say it's equal, someone will put their hand up. But it's more or less equal to draw layer in context that they talk about in the OSX docs. So basically, draw rect means you're dealing with layers underneath the hood. And that sort of was a key point to sort of go, all right, so that's, that's what they're talking about. Um, core graphics helps. Um, with the high resolution stuff, in fact, 95% of the time it hides the fact that you're on a retina display from you, so you don't have to deal with it, which was my problem. Um, and after that, CA tiled layer, it's just, it just is a CA layer. I got, was getting ca caught up in multi-levels and multi-zoom levels and tiles and sizes and scales and things. It's just a CA layer. Uh, it's instantiated as your views layer. Uh, if you tell it to be, which I'll get, I've got code, trust me. Um, it uses DrawRect, so you don't have to deal with it. A lot of the old documentation for CA tiled layer is pre-iOS 4, so it doesn't help 100%. And content scale, more or less, you don't, you don't have to worry about. Um, after learning all this stuff, and this was not a sequential learning order, this wasn't reading a document. Uh, in fact, I was reading Apple Docs today to try and find out how I worked this out. Um, the pieces started to come together. I spoke to people in Melbourne, I spoke to people in San Francisco. I remember sitting down in WWDC last year with an engineer going, all right, dear tiled layer, how does it work? I couldn't even answer, ask the right questions. So I got nothing out of it. The guy was, thought I was an idiot. I don't know, he didn't, he's like, this guy's in the wrong room. <laughs> Again, this is the code, more or less the code you get from Apple, code you get from, from demo code. This is a UI view subclass that would implement CA tiled layer. You've got this plus method layer class, which you'd never use for anything unless, well, I haven't seen any use for it apart from CA tiled layer in, in demo code. That basically says that when this view class uses a layer, it's a CA tiled layer. And with frame, you can see there that I'm just casting self.layer. Um, I didn't compile this code, it's more of an assumption. Um, self delay set levels of detail, they're the two things you handle. And then you've got DrawRect, and DrawRect comes in with, it looks kind of standard, UI graphics context, you've got a uh, transform matrix on your graphics context, you've got a rect, grab an image, draw it into the rect. Cool, all right, all right, not bad. The biggest blocker, apart from, well, once you get past the sort of basic implementation, which literally that's all it is, you've got Levels of detail and levels of detail bias. And they're basically, well, it says there, number of levels, level of detail is the number of levels it'll ask you as you zoom out. So if you start with a, if, you're, if, you're, if your zoom level one, for example, your base level is 800 by 600, as you zoom out, uh, as you halve that, um, their levels of detail. Uh, or if it's, you know, 6,000 by 4,000, as you halve that, you've got different levels of detail. Levels of detail bias, I think is strangely named, but it's the opposite direction. So that's if you start at 600 by 800, 800 by 600, and you want to zoom in on something, you've got levels of detail bias from that point. Um, I was confused to the, uh, confused with how these interact with each other. Um, but 
I finally got there and I've got code to sort of back up my kind of ums and ahs here. Um, what I actually, what I wanted to do was put a tier tiled layer in a UI scroll view. Um, UI scroll view, at least with pinching and zooming, doesn't exist on Mac OS X. Uh, so again, there wasn't, wasn't a lot of examples, but at the end of the day, you've got a linear scale on your, on your UI scroll view zoom scale, which means that it just goes one, two, three, four as it goes up. Um, and it has an exponential effect on the pixels. Remember that CA tiled layer is a layer, and they don't deal with these points that you get in UI, in, in, uh, UI kit. So underneath this, you're like, okay, so I'm going in, I'm going a zoom scale from one to two, so that means that my image is twice as big. That's tw that's you know, to the power of two more pixels, um, and each level of detail and level of detail bias is a power of two more or less pixels than the previous level. So your level of detail one is is you know, power of two times more than the level of detail zero. I think I've got a I think I've got a thing here. Uh, and they overlap, they overlap at zero. The next slide gives you a couple of caveats. Um, but if you've got a scroll view with a zoom scale of one, you see a tiled layer, and this is on non-retina as well. I'll get to that. Um, you've got level one on your scroll view. Your level of detail bias and, and level of detail, will, they're both at zero. Uh, if, you, if you zoom in, go to two, you'll get the first level of detail bias, level four, two and three and so on. It makes sense. It's, it's sort of basic you know, binary maths, um, which I had to learn as well. Uh, some notes, level of detail bias and level of detail, if you call, set them both to zero, you get nothing. If you set them both to one, it seems to be undefined. That, was, that took me a while to work out. Um, for some reason, I think if you, look, if you look at that, if you set them both to one level, I don't know, it's got something to do with zero. They're both overlapping. Uh, if you, as long as you set level of detail to one, level of detail well, at least to one. It could be more than that. But set it to one, and the other ones more than one, it's fine. Um, I've set level of detail to zero in my cases where I'm zooming in, because I'm not. In my cases, I'm starting at the most zoomed out level and zooming in. So I'm mainly going to talk about level of detail bias, but that's fine. It, it's more or less the same thing. Um, I want to jump in some code. Um, I've written, written a little bit of a GitHub project, which I've posted up already, which hopefully highlights everything if I'm jumping over it pretty quickly. But I want to show you this sort of stuff in action. Okay, so this is, this is the code that I've written and put up on GitHub. <laughs> Come on. I'm not sure that the Dropbox or that was Xcode or both. Uh, it's working pretty hard. Okay, so this is a basic demo project that I think you may have seen if I popped up before. And it's giving away my next discussion. This is just normal phone. The, the, the outcome of, of this discussion is this demo app. And basically, it's a big image that I took myself, so there's no problems and it's right near where I work. Um, and this is, my, this is my level of detail zero. This is my one scale image. And the idea is that see a tiled layer is grabbing these tiles that I've supplied. And as I zoom in, you can see it cut the other tiles as it goes. And I've got three levels of detail. And I've superimposed the level of detail into each thing. And you can see the corresponding zoom scale of the scroll view. So that's what I'm kind of, none of my talking meant anything. This is what I'm trying to get at. You can see how it sort of it cuts through there. Now, the way to set this up is actually surprisingly straightforward. So I'm going to run you through my code. And this is non-retina code. I've got a little bit more talking about retina devices. The gist is this. I've got a root view controller. Yep, 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 yep. Presentation. How's that? Uh, the point, the, hold on, where is it? Basically, I'm initializing, <coughs> I'm initializing a scroll view, which is my class, with a frame and a content size. That's it. That's, that's, what my, that's what's in my view controller. Um, I'm, the, I'm the delegate 
and I'm also the data source because you need somewhere to get the tiles. And this is what my interface looks like. I've got a bit of legal. This is the class that runs everything. I've got JC scroll, JC tiled scroll view. It's a tile source delegate. There's a scroll view zoom delegate, which kind of just proxies UI scroll view delegate because it needs to listen to its own calls as well. And this is it here. So JC tiled scroll view is just a vanilla UI scroll view. You can set levels of zoom and levels of detail. Knit with frame content size. And that's just some, some fancy stuff underneath. You move into move into the implementation and you can see that it has a tile view and this is the this is a CA tiled layer this is this is the this is the meat of it all JC tiled view gets knitted with basically the same canvas frame is content size width content size height um, so it's just sort of proxying that down JC tiled view legal is a UI view that has a delegate which is just going to proxy up its data source things I think and a number of zoom levels and it has a tiled layer now here's what I showed before but with a bit more color behind it this is JC tiled view there's our layer class method the tiled layer ignore that it's just a CA tiled layer it's got one method overwritten um, tiled layer that saves me casting that method every time and this is what we do we set a default tile size and set that on our tiled layer tiled layer is just self layer we set levels of detail one so we're gonna have one level of detail and we set number of zoom levels which just proxies level of detail bias to three so we've got three levels of zoom one level of detail that's what I'm telling it to do and then the draw rect comes through, grabs the context, grabs the scale, does a little bit of foo on the min x and min y of the, the rectangle because it comes through with its bounds correct. A little bit of foo there to grab the row and column and then we ask our delegate what the tile view row column and that just does image named this and grabs the tile. Annotate rect just does the, the colors. So what I said there was it's got one level of detail, three levels of zoom. If I roll back here, there's our one level of detail because level level of levels of zoom is zero. As you move through, there's our first, there's our second, and there's our third. And that corresponds all the way up to our powers of two, more or less. Jesse, you've pre-cut these, you can just have them. Yes. I got a little helper helper for that as well. Because I used to cut them in Photoshop, that took forever. Uh, anyway. So that's your basic tile view tile view thing. Uh, if anyone's got any like blaring questions, I'll carry on. But that's the, that's the gist. Like you, you basically get a draw rect with a rect. You divide it up based on your tile size, and then just draw it. And that's it here. Draw image in rect. Uh, that's it. That's why I, I sort of like. Oh, okay, maybe this isn't so hard. Now, the, the problem. The problem came. Well, one more thing. One more thing to show. If I change my levels of detail to two instead of three you can kind of see the effect levels of zoom is the scroll view that goes to 8 which you can see in the top right if I set the levels of detail to 2 there's my 2 I hope this works it doesn't go past it so I've gone to 8 normally at 8 you'd be at the third level and you can see it's all pixelated there so those numbers at least in my subclass there correlate directly to the number of layers of tiles it'll go to so that's just changing one of those one of those values uh, you'll notice that this demo code is only zooming in if you want to zoom out, you just got to do the inverse. Uh, I didn't have enough time at work today to work out how to do that. <laughs> um, now that's all well and good. Um, it's a growl update. 
what if you run this on the retina display? This is a problem I had. I got this working and I'm like, all right, let's run it on the retina display. Um, I'll go back to my three levels of detail that I had before and, and we'll have a look. And I'll just get through my way out of this situation and go back to master. If I run the same code that we just saw, I even did an icon for the demo code. And the same code on a retina device. This is working fine in, in you know, the one times world. You end up with unusual results. First thing to note with this example here is it works and it's not too bad. You can see how it's kind of drawing a lot of tiles but it's there, like it's, it's, it's not what I wanted. I wanted twice as many tiles, not four times as many tiles as before. And I've jumped immediately from, I think, my zero to my, lev my two level. I've, I've missed two levels of zoom. And at least I would have wanted to jump from zero to one because I'm at double. I've jumped an order of magnitude higher than I thought. And, okay, now sort of, ah, oh, there we go. It's, I wanted three levels of zoom. It's kind of given it to me, but it almost wanted another one. I'm like, oh shit, alright, how do I... Okay, alright, fine. Now, I'm going to condense sort of six months of screwing around in my spare time into a list of notes and a pre-canned demo, but I think it's in a slide. This is from Apple, Apple's docs before I get into exactly how to fix it. If you read supporting high resolution screens, which is what I read and then I got what I just showed you, you may need to adjust core animation layers drawing code to account for scale factors. Normally, then however, comma, knowing or changing that scale factor might still be necessary. Ah, okay. When you're viewed as one of the following. Creates additional core animation layers. Uh, with different scale factors and encompass composites them into its own content. Now that's not exactly what CR Tile Layer does, but it's definitely dealing with different scale factors. So that twigged in my mind going, okay, I'm going to have to get in there and do something else. Now, a few things you need to do. Layer content scale, which is your view's content scale factor, which comes from the screen scale factor, which comes for free, is two. In that second instance here, it's two. And as I said before, anything sort of two in pixel world is a power of two, not just the number two. So every pixel in pixel land is squared. So all of a sudden we don't have two times as many tiles, we've got four times as many tiles. That solves our first problem. If you multiply the original tile size by that content scale factor that kind of we end up getting for free, we're, we're sort of saying to it, okay, so go from 256 pixels per tile squared to 512. Okay, so let's let's try that out. Let's let's see what that does. And that's that's a simple fix. In fact, I think I think I prepared this earlier. So I've got a tile size, and it, the K default tile size is 256 by 256. Um, I'll scale that size within a fine transform, which is the same as just times in the two numbers, but that was more fun. Um, <laughs> I'll scale it by the content factor, um, which is what this long line is doing here. And then instead of setting self tile size, I'll set the scale tiled size. Like, okay, that's the first step. You know, I've divided by power of two. Um, where are we at? And this is th this was a sort of breaking point. Going ah, okay, there's the right number of tiles. Like, that's what I wanted. I've got twice as many. Instead of 1.25 wide, I've got 2.5. Awesome. It's even, it's even cropping the bottom edges here. All right, cool. I'm onto something. This is good. Um, but yeah, look. That tile there is actually from the bottom right of the screen, is like from the image as well. We're almost there. I thought, okay. The rest was honestly trial and error. And it took me months to get it right because you keep changing things and it screws up the previous one. Um, we've multiplied the original tile size by the content scale. We also need to multiply the draw rect rect by the context scale because if you look at it, the next clue that I found was that if you put a breakpoint 
in your draw act. We're at the break point. The rectangle that's coming through, it's a bit hard to read from the back, but the rectangle coming through is a width and height is 128. Well, that's not what I wanted. I wanted more than that. I wanted, you know, 256 or at least 512 even. That would make, that would kind of make more sense. Um, so what I needed to do was times that by a scale. Now, I've shown you the second step before the first one, but if I, oh, hold on. I've jumped through. I'm already timesing it by the scale. The scale is too much. That's the problem. In this case here, the top left corner is the top left corner, but this one here isn't quite right. The scale's kind of wrong. So I've jumped ahead, but the gist is, if I take my scale, and divide that scale, because I'm playing with this layer content scale. If I divide that by this content scale, where are we at? And we're back to where we need to be. It wasn't immediately obvious to me that that was the solution. But I got there in the end, and that's what I've come here to say. <laughs> the final piece of the puzzle I skipped over the third point. The draw rect come, if you multiply the draw rect by the context scale, you end up with your 512 by 512. It was originally 128. You divide the rect again by the content scale. I did that in the first step instead of doing two things on the same rect. And you end up at your 256 by 256. You can then take the origin of the rect, divide it all up because it comes with the right bounds, which is what this row, row and column lines are here. You can divide them together. You end up with a row, a column, and you've got it. Because you divided your scale and removed the screen scale or content scale, you've got your actual literal tile scale. And then you just grab it from your delegate and you draw it into the rect, and then it works. The caveat is you still need to provide that extra layer of detail. Even though I'm at zoom scale 8, I'm actually twice as far in as I am on the, the non-retina screen. So previously I was at zoom level 4, uh, zoom level 3, I'm now at zoom level 4, but also it's obvious when you start at zoom level 2. So it sort of all seems to just come together nicely. But you still have to provide the extra level, but it's only one extra level of detail on your, on your tiles than you would previously. Now, next is... I reached my goals. It looks how I want it to look. I don't have at two times scale slides and it seems to scale. If I add more levels of detail or more levels of detail bias, it goes to those black squares. If I add less, I end up not using them. It gets blurry. It seems to, it seems to work. Uh, the question on my next slide was what's next? I'm going to swap to the iPad in a sec. I want to add gesture recognizers to this view so I can tap around and move around. I want to add overlay support so I can add things to the view. And I also want to replace my PNG images with SVG drawings. That's probably the most ambitious part of it, because I still haven't worked out the best way to do that, given that all my graphics come from Illustrator and the SVG export, export's not that great. They're my aspirations. I've taken one step further than my demo code, and instead of actually doing my own Metro apps, I've built an app that edits my Metro apps using this new code. And I just want to show you kind of a neat trick with the tiled layer stuff. This is, uh, this is my, uh oh, crashed, hold on. I'm gonna click it. This is uh, my app without the tiled layer. You can just see it's just a bit jerky. It just, you just see it as it clips over the edges. It's just not quite right. Anyway, so I took the, the, took the tiled layer, and this isn't on GitHub, but the idea is that I've got my nice smooth layer, I've got my different zoom levels, it's all nice. This is sort of the next version of the app that's coming out. But I thought, oh, I want to be able to edit things and kind of adjust bits of data, so that I'll add overlay support. I will add this to GitHub, but the gist is that you can go into a train station line, and you can add these overlays to the map. And if they're not mapped, they just sort of appear at the top right. 
Anyway, you add these overlays, and as you zoom in, they keep their pixel perfectness. So as I go all the way in, they're still nice and crisp. And if you add the gesture recognizer support to it, you can move them around with your finger. So all of a sudden, everything's nice and pixel perfect. You've got gesture recognizers, and it's just nice. That's kind of where I'm heading with it. Um, you can obviously see how you could display roots on top of the map and change things around. And as you scale, it just, I don't know, this isn't crunching CPU. This is not losing anything. It's just, just nice and neat. So that's that. I'm going to swap back. That's my what's next slide. JC Tiled Views on GitHub. The code I was showing you is actually from GitHub. The presentations on GitHub, the notes I'm reading are on GitHub. Um, share, contribute. Oh wait, before that, I've got two, I've got two hints. UI image named, which everyone uses because it's part of that free at times, two times thing, I found in this process to be really handy. Image named, which I've got down here on the bottom, can do directories. If you didn't know that, that's really cool. It can also do localized assets. So in my app, I've got a Korean map and an English map. And I just put the tiles in a tiles folder in the LProj directory. And if you're in Korean, it loads up the Korean map. And if you're in English, it loads up the English map. And that's across the board. So you can put any of your images, if you, even if you've got at two times graphics, same thing, in LProj directories and Image name seems to pick them up. You can even have multiple directories. You could put your different tile scales in different, different folders. And um, the caveat to that is that Xcode doesn't handle them at all. You actually have to manually script your tiles into your app bundle. But that's 10 minutes if you know sort of what you're doing. Um, that's one. Actually, no, that's both tips. <laughs> there's, one, there's one tool. Um, that's linked in the notes called Tile Cutter by Jeff Lamarche. It's just a Mac, open source Mac app that's on GitHub that you just drag your images in, tell it 256 by 256 and it kind of pushes them out. There's more you could do with it. I'd love to command line script it. Um, not there yet, but there is a tool that I've linked in the notes if you want to do your own tile cutting. Don't use Photoshop. Uh, yeah, thanks. Melbourne Cocoa Heads is brought to you by Itty Bitty Apps, but we couldn't do it without the generous sponsorship of Shine Technologies. Thanks also to RMIT for providing the venue, and to our many regular attendees, speakers and volunteers. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, you can visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or by following Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter. <laughs>